Today, I'm going to share with you exact step-by-step -step instruction on how to become a QA automation engineer on your own. I'll give you a list of tools, a list of possibly even websites or platforms where you can learn majority of technologies that you need in order to become a QA automation engineer. But please make sure to remember that you cannot become a QA automation engineer without learning manual testing first because it's the base. You have to know what to test, you have to know how to test, you have to know what kind of testing can you actually perform and only then you can automate it. I'm not even talking about a release process and everything else that you have to know before you get started. Good afternoon QA engineers and those who are planning to become on soon. My name is Sergey Kromchenko, I'm a QA engineer, lead manager and a senior engineering manager of SDET in the past. But these days I'm helping people like you to become a QA from scratch or to improve your existing skills. So let's kick it off! The very first thing that we usually teach in our bootcamp is terminal. because. Whenever you write test automation, it means you are writing code, you're writing scripts, or you are scripting, whatever you want to call it. Regardless, you need to run those scripts somehow, and you do need to know where to run them and how to run them. I mean, which commands to use. And there are multiple websites where you can learn it, and I'm actually going to leave a link for the video that I have written for you, specifically right here, with the 50 basic commands that you can use as the QA automation engineer. And those are actually kind of advanced commands, so you can just write them down, watch this video for a couple of minutes and you will already know all the commands that you need to know in order to become a QA automation engineer. Point number two, HTML and CSS websites. In our bootcamp, we do teach people how to build a website from scratch. We're not going very deep, but you need to understand how do websites work before you can actually write test automation for them. Because number one, you're going to have to know where to click where to type in your data and how to type it. In order to do that, you need to look for the specific element on the page. And in order to know that, you're gonna learn HTML and CSS. And that is exactly why you wanna learn. And if you guys are interested in learning it, I'm going to leave a link right below this video for the website called Code Academy. By the way, it's a free advertisement. They are not paying me anything. I'm just saying that if you wanna become a key automation engineer, it would be an amazing for you to learn basics of HTML and CSS. Let's move on. Third point, and the most important one, and my favorite one, JavaScript. I would say one of the world's most popular programming languages, at least for the last decade. And JavaScript can be used to create a front-end for the web application, can be used to create a back-end for the web application, it can also be used to create mobile apps, it can also be used to automate bots, robots, even to do some AI work, etc. It was not specifically created for it, for some of those things, but you can definitely use it and that's why it is still one of the world's most popular programming languages. <laughs> Now question, where can you learn it and how can you learn it? Way number one, just watch this video to understand how to run it in a browser. Those are the very basics that I've created specifically for you with one of our students. But if you want to dig deeper, if you actually want to become a QA automation engineer or even software developers, website number one, once again, codecademy.com. Website number two, freecodecamp.org. You can learn a lot, but it is very advanced, guys. I'll be honest. Probably one out of thousand or two out of thousand will only be able to learn all of that on your own. A majority of people need the mentor who will guide them step by step and will show them how it is done in a startup. And you will actually need to get an experience from the startup. So if you guys are interested in that, if you do need the mentor, feel free to schedule a completely free consultation with me for 30 minutes and the link for it will be right below this video. After you have learned JavaScript, you will need to choose Test Automation Framework, which is pretty much a hammer to put the nail down. So you need a tool. You know, when you're learning JavaScript, it's like you're working out to be able to hold the hammer, but you need to have the hammer. You need to learn how to use it. So Cypress or Playwright or Selenium WebDriver, those are hammers in order to put the nails down in the wood. And you'll need to pick one of those in order to learn how to do test automation from scratch. Right at this moment, you can choose any one of them because all of them have jobs. I would honestly pick Playwright or Cypress because those are more modern tools and even though Selenium does have quite a lot of jobs for it on the market, I would still pick either Cypress or Playwright because the amount of jobs with the Cypress and, and Playwright are skyrocketing, especially Playwright. But Playwright is the one between all of these three who have the least amount of jobs on the market right now, but it will be changing in the future. 
That's why my recommendation is to learn either Cypress or Playwright, or could, you could learn both. But Selenium is still very valuable on the market. There are still a lot of old companies who are still using Selenium just because they've been using it for decades. So if you are interested in learning that tool, you are also feel free to do so. And probably one of the best picks to learn those tools, if you have already learned JavaScript, would be simply one of these videos that I have for you on a playlist. You can also find right below this video where you can learn both basics of Cypress and Playwright. You can also find the videos on YouTube for Selenium. And if you want to dig a little bit deeper without any internship, without practice, you can simply go to Udemy, buy a course for 12 bucks and learn any, any one of those tools. We do have some students who are going through our course who are learning the basics. They are getting very strong base in order to be able to continue on their own. And afterwards, I'm telling them, yo guys, you are smart enough to continue on your own now. You have a strong base. You can buy a course for 12 bucks. You can go through it on your own. And based on all the experience in a US-based startup, all of the knowledge that you receive from our course, you, it will be very easy for you to pick any tool that you would like. So that's why you got to make sure you have a strong base first, and then you can pick any of these tools that you like. By the way, if some of you guys do not have any experience or have never gone even through the manual bootcamp, let me tell you this. I have prepared one week introduction course for the price of two dinners. If you want to try yourself in a US-based startup in our bootcamp for an entire week, simply follow the link right below this video and we're going to start our next introduction week in about seven days. I'll see you there. After you've learned one of these test automation tools, you have to run them somewhere. First, it is completely fine to run it on your local, which means to run it on your computer. But later on, when you are joining the team, you're gonna have to use some sort of the CI CD system, such as GitHub Actions or Jenkins. But Jenkins is one of the oldest one on the market, I would say. It still exists in a, from place to place, in Java environments mostly. But GitHub Actions is the world's most popular one right at this moment, and Microsoft is pushing on it really hard. So if I would be you, I would learn GitHub Actions. That's what I'm teaching our students in our bootcamp right at this moment. And that's what we're going to be continuing teaching in the future because it's still growing like crazy and it's a huge platform. You might ask me, why is it the best? Well, because majority of people use GitHub for code repository and GitHub Actions lives right there. So you don't have to do any integration. You simply fill out some, pretty much some forms or some file and it's automatically going to run your test somewhere in the cloud. You might ask, where do you learn it? Well, I have a video for you right here, the basics of a CI CD. And also, right below this video, I'm going to leave a link for you for an article to follow that particular video. So you could simply copy paste your code, run it, then edit it, modify it, break it, fix it, and that's how you learn it. On the top of all of this, you can also learn Docker, you can learn AWS, any cloud technologies. You can learn quite a lot. I will not dig into those more advanced topics as you don't need them right at this moment. You already have a huge list of things to do. And one of the most important things, guys, you do need practice. Practice makes it perfect. I did have a lot of people who bought a lot of courses on a Udemy, who did go through different boot camps, but they still come back to me and say, hey, I cannot get a job. I have gaps in my knowledge. I'm not sure where they are. Can you just go through a couple of interviews and tell me what am I missing? And usually they end up taking our course again because I do not know where do you have gaps in the knowledge. I can interview you, but that's gonna take days, not hours, in order to dig into all the holes that you might have in your experience. And majority of the time, these are two things. Number one, missing actual experience working for the US-based company because you cannot answer any practical interview questions or experience-based interview questions. And number two, actual interview preparation. People who learn from Udemy or different places, they did have not gone through a lot of interview preparation, so they do not know how to answer simple questions, such as, where do you store token in a browser? Do you guys know? If you do, please leave it in the comment below because 99% of people who come from different boot camps, they cannot simply answer this question. Great, I hope this video is going to help some of you guys to become a QA engineer completely on your own without paying any money to anyone or paying a little bit. If you will not be able to achieve it on your own, feel free to schedule a free consultation with me right below this video. Now, don't forget to drink that water, get some workout, and I'll see you in the next video.